Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this rifle right here. It's the TMK 15 from Spec Op Manufacturing. Now first and foremost, uh, you guys have asked me to review these rifles a ton, not just budget rifles, but one from this actual company. And this is one of their new models for 2017. So I actually got this as a t &E rifle a few months ago. So before they even hit the market and uh, we've been putting rounds through it every week since we've got it in right now, we have right around a thousand rounds through it. And uh, right up front, had zero malfunctions to date so you can't complain about that that's with a ton of different magazines through it um, different types and no issues at all in terms of uh, how it feeds and all that stuff so um, what we're going to do first is step outside take a look at the accuracy of the rifle see what kind of groups you can expect out of it and then uh, we'll come back in and take a look at the specs because those of you guys who watch this channel are realistically more educated than most AR-15 owners out there by far about what the specs mean, how they translate into performance and durability and things like that. And this rifle has very good specs for the price point. So we'll get into all those details after the accuracy coming up next. Time to see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this rifle here. Um, being as though it's a budget rifle, we're gonna shoot a few sort of practice loads through it, see how it does in a couple match grade loads. Uh, on the rifle right now, we have a Geissele mount with the uh, primary arms one to eight second focal plane scope with the ACSS reticle. Uh, the stand is a CTK Precision, and uh, I think that's pretty much it. Target down range at 100 yards. And in the gun right now, we have 55 grain Freedom Munitions remanufactured stuff. So <clears throat> we'll see how it does. There you go, doesn't look too bad from here. Next up, we have some 62 grain steel cased wolf stuff. It's full metal jacket. I was kind of thinking a lot of folks who buy you know, rifles like this are gonna be running steel case, so we'll see what it'll do. And believe me, I ran a lot of steel case for years, so it's all right. doesn't look too bad from here. So next up, we'll move on to the stuff that should be more accurate, but you never really know. So you test it out. This is some uh, Freedom Munitions. This one here is loaded with the uh, 69 grain bullet. It is hollow tail, or hollow point bolt tail, I should say. Uh, it's their match line of ammo. So theoretically, should get some good groups. We shall see. It is new ammo, so it's not remanufactured. New cases. From what I can see down here, uh, you guys can certainly see better than I can at this point, but that looks pretty good, so. Next up, we have some Gorilla ammunition. This is their 55 grain Sierra Blitzkrieg bullet. Uh, I've always had good luck with this stuff. It's, it's been accurate in just about everything. So, load up five rounds and send them down range. So I'm gonna lead left of the target. There's actually a old plant, the soybean plant, that's kind of blocking my uh, lower right target. So we'll, we'll hold the left edge. That one looked pretty good too. Let's go check it out. I'd say we had some pretty good accuracy all the way around. Uh, the first up was the 55 grain Freedom Munitions load. 
outside of that one, it would have been a hell of a group. But instead, with it, we're right at one and three quarter inches with the 55 grain Freedom Munitions. Moved over here to the Wolf 62 grain. We're right at two and a half inches on the dot for the Wolf. And then I uh, moved over here to the 69 grain Feder uh, Freedom Munitions. This is what we have, the Rifle 04. Probably need to drop it down a click. Um, but right there, we're at an inch and a quarter on that group. And then the uh, 55 grain Sierra Blitzkrieg, which like I said, I was holding right here. Um, that group right there, exactly at one inch. So there you go. Uh, with the match grade stuff, it certainly tightened those groups up. But even with like the freedom and and two and a half's not bad either with steel case. So all in all, I'd say it's shooting pretty well. Kind of a, another data point on the barrel and the quality of it. Uh, when the suppressor was on there, it had zero uh, point of impact shift. So check the suppressor makers. A lot of them, at least, have told me anyway that that tends to be an indicator of barrel quality in terms of how true it is, um, true the surfaces are. Um, so it had zero point of impact shift. So that's that's another good thing for it. The first thing we'll take a look at up close is going to be the handguard. Now, this is going to be one of the few sort of things I'm not a huge fan of on this rifle, and we'll tell you why here uh, as we go along. So first off, it is a 6061 aluminum handguard. It has lots of venting for uh, cooling if you're shooting rapidly. Uh, that's definitely always one of the concerns whenever you have these narrower handguards. So on that note, uh, it being narrow, it's very comfortable and absolutely to grip onto is not an issue at all. It's very ergonomic in the hand. Um, this is a 15 inch handguard on a 16 inch barrel. So one of the things I'm personally, one guy, not a huge fan of is gonna be the fact that the key mod slots are sort of only up here for say the front five inches or so and back here, what they did is just cut out all this stuff and it's super lightweight that's the good thing but the bad thing is if you want to attach anything back here you really kind of can't now i understand with the sort of new style of shooting folks really are kind of putting their stuff up here but i'm six feet tall and sometimes they like to keep my hands back here-ish with like a vertical grip as those of you who watch the channel know and uh, with this handguard it's just not possible however that may be a me issue and not so much an issue with the rifle um, but in terms of construction there's been no issues at all uh, attaches here at the three six and nine o'clock positions on the uh, barrel nut seems to be a secure lockup system and didn't have any issues out of it at all I should point out there are no T markings on the top of it. However, there are T markings back here on the receiver. The barrel itself is a 16 inch barrel. It's got a mid-length gas system. And as you guys can see, it is the government profile. Now out on the end, we do have a A2 birdcage flash hider. And as you can see from the markings there, it is chambered in 556 with a one and seven twist. It's 4150 CMB steel, and it is nitrided obviously both inside and out. Now we also have M4 feed ramps on there and the accuracy you guys already saw, it certainly did just fine there. Now one thing I wanna point out there on the barrel nut, I'm not sure if it comes across on camera, but there is some anti-seize up under that barrel nut, which is a good thing. That's obviously uh, what we wanna see on there. One thing I should point out is that when I first got this rifle in, I always check everything for Loctite and the little screws that were in there. I did not have Loctite on them, at least didn't appear to, but as you guys know who watch the channel, um, even some higher end rifles like the Daniel Defense over on uh, the AK Operators Union, that one shipped without Loctite as well. So I definitely always recommend checking screws. Just make sure they have a little bit of a blue or purple Loctite on there. And uh, really, you shouldn't have any issues with it. We didn't have any issues with this at all. But uh, just pointing that out. So good on them for putting the anti-seas on there. And uh, when you get these in, maybe out of dab a Loctite yourself. Not sure if you guys can see it, but it does have the nickel boron coated chamber in there. It's a little bit dirty, but should still be visible. There's also the M4 feed ramps in there. Uh, the upper receiver has uh, everything you'd want it to have for a mil spec type rifle. So we have our forward assist shell deflector. It's made of 7075 T6 aluminum. And when you get it in, it will have that dry film coating on the inside. And that is a mil spec thing that a lot of budget rifles certainly don't have. And it certainly is nice, but no issues at all. One thing that's a little different, like we uh, hinted at earlier, is that it does have the T markings, but they're not colored. So sometimes on rifles, you'll see the uh, white lettering on there. Not the case here. So one other thing we want to point out that I'm sure I'm going to be asked about, if not, is going to be these Griffin armament sights. So these things are pretty cool. They're modular sights, so they obviously mount at the 45 degree angle like you guys see here. Uh, we use them throughout the review, had zero issues with them, found that they lock into place really good. And uh, if you want to just overcome that pressure and they'll go back down. So it's sort of a tension 
lock there. There's no buttons you have to hit or anything like that, which certainly is nice. And of course, the same thing here on the rear. But there's also another thing that's pretty cool about them. The sights can also be configured as traditional backup sights. They don't just have to be offset. They come with this different bottom piece that allows it to be mounted traditional like this, or with the ones you guys just saw with this offset mounting base. It's either left or right side of the rifle, either side's just fine, or traditional in the you know mounting in the 90 degree position, which I certainly think is pretty cool. And the lower receiver is made of 7075 T6 aluminum as well. Just like the upper, it's got uh, type two hard anodizing on there, mil spec stuff. It does have have a flared maglow which i like i've pointed that out on many ars over the years that i really think pretty much all ARs should have it there's really no reason not to have it um, but really nothing too fancy there you can see it does have the low shelf there in the back um, and the trigger is a nickel boron or nickel teflon i'm not sure which coated mil spec style trigger um, with the exception of the hammer there we'll show you here in just a second but it has a good pull on it it breaks cleanly, which is really important. It's got to break right at five and a half pounds on my trigger scale. And as you can see, the hammer is a little bit different than some of the more mil spec -ish ones, but good positive reset there, as you guys can see. And it has the Magpul SL grip on there and the MOE stock. The extension there is staked. Um, the castle that I should say is staked, and it is a six position buffer tube. The buffer tube is 7075 T6 aluminum, uh, so mil spec stuff there, and the buffer is just a carbine buffer, so nothing too fancy to write home about, but certainly it works, and again, at the price point of this rifle, it's a pretty good value. The bolt carrier group certainly is one of the most important components on any AR, and this one's pretty solid. This one's manufactured by Toolcraft. The bolt is 158 carpenter steel. It is, again, individually HP and MP tested to mil spec, which certainly, again, and you're not going to find on a lot of budget um, bulk carrier groups. It has the uh, MP marking on there. And if you pull the extractor out, you'll see it does have the black uh, insert there, the O-ring insert. So moving on to the carrier, it is 8620 steel. You see it has a full auto profile. Uh, staking looks just fine. I guess some people could complain about that one stake there. But either way, I don't really think it's an issue. It is chrome lined. Um, so... In terms of specs, it certainly works just fine. We had zero issues with it at all. Charging handle is just a basic mil spec charging handle. Nothing too fancy. I honestly don't know if it's 7075. I'm not sure on that. If I find out, I will annotate it below. Earlier in the video, we were going over the details of the handguard. You guys probably thought, oh, he's going to start trashing this rifle, but not so. Um, really, that is kind of the only thing I don't particularly like. But again, that could be a me thing, not a rifle thing. Some of you guys could love it. So um, all in all, you get a ton of rifle for the money. Um, a lot of budget rifles out there are going to skimp on certain things. Like, so you're going to get a 6061 aluminum extension instead of a 7075. A lot of times the barrels are not going to be nitrated or not chrome lined, either one. And they're just going to be the standard metal so this one has a treatment which certainly is good it's also 4150 a lot of the budget rifles are going to be 4140 uh, or 416 steel versus 416 r which is a little bit better um, so for the money you get a lot obviously having the free floated handguard as well as something that you don't see a lot in this budget um, one sort of thing that you don't get with it that you do in some other rifles is sights like uh, obviously we were talking about the griffin armament sights earlier i'd add those because it doesn't come with any sights so just pointing that out but all in all the magpul furniture um, the specs of the rifle all around are pretty darn good again for a rifle that comes in right around six hundred dollars so and that's about it guys if you have any questions about the rifle that we didn't answer here in the video by all means post down below in the comment section you can also post over at my facebook page as always but thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and we hope to see you in the next video